Okay, so we're gonna have a, we're gonna do this video on direct variation. I've got good news and good news when it comes to this topic, because if you paid attention to our past topics with things like constant rates of change and graphic linear equations, all of this is exactly the same, except with direct variation, your graph will always go through or from the origin, always. So in the past, we've had graphs that look like this to where, let's pretend that's the XY axis. We have a line that maybe goes like that, or maybe we had a line that went in the other direction. And they don't have to go through the origin. They can't. We've done many problems where they have, to where you've got your graph, and you actually go to graph your line. Your line goes, let's pretend that goes through the origin. And your line goes through the origin. Or let's say in the other direction. That's ah, supposed to go through the origin. I missed again. Through the origin, like that. So when they go through the origin like this one, I didn't mean to erase it, but when they go through the origin like that, that means they're direct variation. They are, they vary directly. It means that they are, there is nothing else happening to it other than multiplying by what they told you to multiply by. So just know, the difference between direct variation and what we've been doing is linear, linear equations. Direct variation will be aligned, will be linear, but direct variation will always go through the origin. The graph will always go through the origin. And whereas regular linear equations, sometimes they do go through the origin. When they do, they are direct variation. But that's not what we were asking you before. We just want to make sure you could graph them and interpret them. Okay, so, so I mentioned it already, but when two quantities have a constant ratio, the relationship is called direct variation. We also learned a while ago that the relationship is also considered um, directly proportional. I'm sorry, not directly, just proportional. So, uh, AKA proportional. Back before we learned how to check if something was proportional or not, we checked all the ratios. We checked to see if they had a constant ratio. So if the ratio was the same, we did that back in 4-1C. That tells us if the ratios were the same, they were proportional. Well, now I know if all the ratios are the same, it's also considered direct variation. Direct variation is generally just considered, uh, sometimes it's the graphed version of directly pro uh, proportional situations, stuff like that. The constant ratio is called the, con the constant ratio, meaning the one that you checked that was the same for all of the x and y values. It's called the constant of variation, is what it's called. And these equations, they take this format. All direct, all direct variation equations will have this format. Y equals k times x. Y and x mean the same thing we're used to them meaning, just uh, output, input. K is just the, co uh, the um, coefficient of x. It's just some value being multiplied against x. K can be a fraction. K can be a whole number. K can be a negative. K can be a decimal. It could be anything. So the direct variation will always take this form. It'll be y equals something times x. And we've done equations like that for a few weeks now, where, for example, when you had a graph stuff like this, if you, when you had a graph y equals 2x, or if you had a graph y equals negative 4x, Whenever there's nothing after it, meaning there's no plus something, there's no minus something, or minus something, or it doesn't matter. If there's no plus or minus something after it, that's how you know it's gonna be direct variation because there's nothing else going on other than the direct, the direct connection of the multiplying relationship. There's nothing being added or subtracted afterwards. So all of them will have the formula of y equals something times x. All right, so now, Let's take a look at this example for a moment. It says, the time it takes Lucia to pick pints of blackberries is shown in the graph. Determine the rate in minutes per pint. Minutes per pint. If you look at your graph, minutes. It's your y axis. It's your output. All those things mean the same thing. So your y or your output. And pints is gonna be your x or your input. So they're asking minutes per pint. So that's output per input, or y per x, or change in y over change in x, change in output over change in input. They're asking the exact same thing we've been doing for weeks when we talked about constant rate of change, or when we talked about slope. This is one of those situations. These, this, we're talking about constant rate of change, or slope. It's just, it's always gonna come from the origin. It's gonna come from zero, zero. And in fact, that makes sense. If she has picked zero pints, if she's picked nothing, then she spent no time because she didn't do anything. So that kind of makes sense. They go together. So the question says, determine the rate in minutes per pint. Now, here's what I want you guys to do. In the past, 
Some of you have gotten lucky with some of our past equations that we've been doing where you had questions that said identify the slope or the constant rate of change and you had a graph and the graph looks something like this and you to find the constant rate of change you just took if we were asking for this point you would take that value and put it over that value and simplify now that method only works when you have direct variation when it goes through the origin like this like that that's that method only works for that I, I cautioned you guys back then to make sure you did change in y over change in x not just the y value over the x value but when we're doing direct variation you can just do that because it's coming from the origin or you can still do what you've always done. Look at the change numbers. Look and see that it went from, for if we were to use these two points, it went up 15 and then it went over one because it went from one to two. So we would say up 15 over one, simplify that fraction, it simplified all the way, 15 over one. And so you found that constant, you found that constant variation. In this example, the constant variation K would be 15 over one, okay? So, I'm going to write K. So 15 over 1, that equals K, or just 15. So the equation would be Y equals 15X. That would be the equation for this line. Um, but now, if they wanted us to interpret it into words, if they wanted to know minutes per pint, we could actually interpret this into words. So if we interpret this into words, 15 represented minutes, 1 represented pints. So we would put that in the word to say 15 minutes per 1 pint, or 15 minutes per pint. And that's a fact what they agreed to as well. It takes 50 minutes to pick one pint of blackberries. So remember, direct variation is just like regular old constant rate of change, just like regular old linear relationships, except all of these linear relationships, when you graph them, they will come from the origin. Or if you were doing a table of values like down here, if you were doing a table of values, your table of values would start at zero, zero. You would actually start at zero, zero. You could have, you could add that and you would see here it's going up by one every single time. Here it's going up by 12 every single time. So subtract 12, we're at zero. Subtract one, we're at zero. So it starts at zero, zero. Because of that, it's a direct variation situation. So you can use everything we talked about, direct variation. You could solve for things the same way we solve for proportional things, meaning you can use proportions to solve these. You can, or you can use the equation that you make. Um, so you can use the equation to solve for things or you can use a, a proportion, you've got choices. So let's take a look at that example. All right, so in example two, it says there are 12 trading cards in a package. Make a table and graph to show the number of cards in one, two, three, and four packages. Is there a constant rate? So obviously in this example, they did it for you. But what would you normally do for yourself is this. You would have to, you normally would, could do this on your own. You could do an input output table, X. X can be the number of packages because that's what you're choosing, okay? You would choose the number of packages. You're not choosing how many are in them. That was chosen for you. Okay, so X could be how many packages? And they said one, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. Now, if it's 12 cards per package, that means it's 12 times the number of packages. And so that could be like, you could ask yourself, well, how many cards would I have in two packages? Well, you would do 12, ti you would do 12 times two. So that tells you multiplying. So your equation is your equation is y equals 12x because it's 12 cards times number of packages equals your total number of cards. So 12x can go in the middle, and then your output. So now go ahead and plug in each of these. Give me one second. Good afternoon, Mr. Students. And don't forget that after you have your column for y, you're also going to have a column for your ordered pairs. I'm going to squeeze them in. I may not write them all, but I at least want to remind you that they're there. All right, so for the first one, let's start plugging all these in. So this will be 12 times something for all of them, since it's 12 times x. So let's plug in those numbers. One, two, three, four. So now let's go ahead and calculate them all. So 12 times one is 12, 24, 12 times three is 36, 12 times four is 48. So your first ordered pair is at one comma 12. Put those two numbers together. Your next one's at 2, 24. I'm not going to write them all, those are the last of them. I just want to remind you how we did it. So you'd go to 1, 12, you'd put a point there. 2, 24, put a point there. 3, 36, put a point. 4, 48, put a point. And you'll notice all these points in a straight line, that means you're doing it correctly. If at any point your points are not in a straight line, just like when we learned how to graph linear equations, that means you made a mistake. Notice that the line for this graph goes through the origin. All direct variation graphs will go through the origin. 
So let's answer the question. Is there a constant rate? Well, let's see guys, if it's going up, if it's going up and if it goes up one over one, up one over one, up one over one, up one over one, every single time, yes, there is a constant rate. So the first part of that question is we would say, yeah, yes, there is. And then it says, is it a direct variation? I told you the requirements for direct variation was it had to be a straight line with a constant rate of change, it had to go through the origin. So it met the visual definition that we placed. And also, because it is direct variation, we know it's direct variation because y equals kx. Look at our equation, y equals 12x. That's the form of y equals kx. In this case, k is 12. So because k equals 12, meaning the number in front of x and there's nothing after x, we know it is direct variation because the equation has the form of y equals kx. Because that's the format of all direct variation equations. Let's take a look at a couple more. Take a look at exercise number one at the top. It's about soap. It says, Wil, uh, Wilhelma bought six bars of soap for $12. The next day, Sophia bought 10 bars of the same kind of soap for $20. What is the cost of one bar of soap? There's two ways to do this. We can solve this by do, looking up unit rates. We can, actually there's three ways, I guess. We can solve this with a proportion. We can also solve this using the direct variation equation. Remember, the direct variation equation takes this format, y equals kx. We just have to find out what is k. We could find out what k is by looking at $12 and six bars of soap. When you go to the store, you don't choose how much money, you choose how much soap you need. You're choosing how much soap to buy. That's the first thing you choose. So the amount of soap you buy, that determines how much you pay. So because of that, the bars of soap, that's gonna be x. And the amount that you pay, that's gonna be your y. So let's plug those in. So let's put 12 in y's place. And we don't know K, so I'm just going to leave it as K. And let's put six bars in X's place. Oop, I meant to put a six there. So you have 12 equals K times six. Solve for K now. We would solve for K by dividing both sides by six. Just like we learned back in chapter three. Okay, and we've left with two equals K. We've left with two equals K because 12 by six is two. We now know what k is, therefore we now have our equation. That tells us our equation is y equals 2x, because it was normally y equals kx, but k we found out was 2, so it's y equals 2x. Just to make sure, let's make sure that predicts our other one. 10 bars of soap, so that would be 10 times 2. Well, that equals 20, and it says, oh, it is $20, so it does work out, so our equation does fit. So we found the equation for it, not that it was asking us to, but I want to show you the direct variation method. It also says, what is the cost of one bar of soap? Well, let's see. We just found out K was two. Remember, K is the constant rate, the uh, constant variation, otherwise known as the constant rate of change for direct variation. So two, that's what it is. That's how much one bar of soap is. One bar of soap is $2. In this question, that may have made sense to you. You may have realized that. So $2 per bar of soap. Take a look at example number two, exercise two, hit pause if you think you've got it. It says Franklin is cooking a three pound turkey breast for six people. If the number of pounds of turkey varies directly, meaning direct variation, with the number of people, make a table to show the number of pounds of turkey for two, four, and eight people. Oh, I didn't mean to put that line. So two, four, eight people. That's my values for X. Now, it told us that a three pound turkey, in fact, I'll squeeze in a three right there, a three pound turkey will fit six people. Three pounds, six people. So we need to figure out, it says direct variation, which means it's gonna have the form of y equals kx. We don't know k, but we certainly know x and y. x is gonna be the three and y is gonna be the six. We wanna software, software. So y is six, we don't know k, but we know x is three. So here the same thing as we did last time, divide both sides by three. I'm just writing with a fraction bar instead. We end up with two equals k. So this one happened to be two again. So that tells us k equals two, which means y equals kx, or y equals two x instead of k. That's our equation. So if we have two x, that means two times x. I'm gonna skip that three. So for now, plug in those values. Two, four, eight. So let's see, two people, two people are gonna, it's gonna cost us, or we're gonna need four pounds of turkey. For four people, two times four, that's eight pounds of turkey. For eight people, two times eight, that's 16 pounds of turkey. 
So we now have a value for every single one. We've answered the question to show the number of pounds of turkey for two, four, and eight people. We have now completed that question. Let's try, let's try maybe one or two more. Let's take a look at question number two on the screen. All right, so for question number two, it's about dune buggies. It says Beach Travel, looks all capital, so it's the name of a company. So Beach Travel rents dune buggies for $50 for four hours um, or $75 for six hours. You as the customer, you're going to choose how long you want to keep it. So hours is what you're going to choose. You chose how long you wanted to keep it. So uh, we know all direct variations are going to have the formula of y equals kx. k is just some constant number times x. It could be a fraction, decimal, whole number, negative, stuff like that. So if it's $50 for four hours, that means that y is 50 when x is 4. So y is 50 when x is 4. And we do not know k, but we certainly can solve for it. Because we have k times 4 equals 50. So what we would do is we would divide both sides by 4. Go ahead and solve. I did not mean to erase. Let's undo that. Okay. All right, so divide both sides by 4. So we know that they cancel on the left side, so we're left with just k. So what goes into 54 times? Well, $12.50, that goes into 54 times. Unless I'm crazy. So, okay, so 1250. Okay, that's what K equals. So we solve for K. That's our constant of variation, also known as our constant rate of change. So to answer the question, what is the hourly rate? The hourly rate is $12.50 per hour. But just to make sure it fits, we can test it. If you're worried you made a mistake, <clears throat> test it with your other values that you were given, if you're given more than one. Let's see if it's true even for this one. Let's see that when, when you know that your output or your Y, your total price is $75, let's see if it's true. We know that, we know that K is going to be 1250, or at least we think K is 1250, and X is going to be six hours. So let's see if all this is true. Let's check it. So you can take your time to do six times 1250 and see what you get. I just want to color code those real fast. All right, I saved you from the drudgery of long multiplication. Over here, you do 1250 times six, we get 75. So that means on the right side, we have 75. So it says 75 equals 75. And if that's a true statement, you know you're good to go. We know that they are equal to each other. So you know you, you checked this answer. You know that what you have is reasonable and it is gonna be the correct answer. It's going to tell you how much it is for the hourly rate. We tested it based on the other numbers we were given. So $12.50 per hour, that would be the answer to the final question. All right, we'll make this our last example. So this one's about wedding favors. And just quick background information, if you know what those are, that's a quick little goodie bag or a little treat you give the people who come to your wedding. Sometimes it's like giving them a little goodie bag of something. All right, so let's see. It says Lucius is making, uh, Lucius is making favors for his sisters. Oh, it's a dude for Lucius. Wedding, if supplies for 25 favors cost $62.50, how much do supplies for 60 favors cost? So well, here's, here's what we gotta do, guys. There's two ways to solve this. I mentioned to you in the very beginning of this video that all direct variation equations or situations are also known as being directly proportional. So you're welcome to use a proportion. So there are two methods to solve this. One of them is using a skill we learned back in chapter four with proportions. So the first method is the proportion method and I'm going to show it to you both ways so that you can do either or. I don't have an opinion which one you use. They are they both always work. Just one of them might have less steps than the others. In my opinion for a lot of these sometimes the direct variation equation y equals kx I think that that is the one that tends to have the least amount of steps for these types of questions but just in case we'll do it this way. So we're going to do we'll do both methods. So the direct variation equation, where in other words, you solve for k, and then you set up an equation where you know k, and then you use it to find out whatever you want. So that remember that equation is y equals kx, something times x. That would be your second method. All right, so let's do it, let's do it using the first old, old method that we learned back in chapter 4, where we're going to make a proportion. That's, what, that's the first method we will do. 
All right, so we know that if it's 25 favorites for 6250, we know that they go together. So 25, I'm gonna put fave for favors, and 6250 is money. So 6250, that's a rate, and that rate is also half of our proportion that we would set up to solve this. Read the rest of the question. How much do supplies for 60 favors cost? They gave us a favors number. They did not give us a dollars number. And so we know the favors is on top, dollars is on bottom. They gave us a favors number. So that number, this 60 favors is gonna go right up top. So a reminder how to do that. Remember, when we make rate proportions, you have to line up your units of measure. Favors over dollars, favors over dollars. So that means when we solve for this unknown amount, we're solving for dollars. And that actually makes sense. It says how much do, does it cost? So we know it's asking for dollars. So use your cross product property like we learned back in chapter four to go ahead and solve this. I'm gonna hit pause for a moment for the multiplication. I'm not gonna use, waste your time to do it. I'll just quickly remind you how to set it up. So we have 60 times 62.5, and then you also have to multiply in the other direction, x times 25. So if you need a reminder of how to do the cross product property, check out some of the videos we did back in chapter four. All right, so I don't wanna waste your life doing it because you, you've learned this in chapter four, but just to remind you, multiply both directions diagonally. They always equal each other. That's what we did right here. So we found out that um, solving for x, x is 150. Just remember, when you do your cross product property, I'm gonna backtrack for a moment. You end up with a one-step equation that you always solve with division because that's how you get rid of all coefficients. We want to get rid of the 25. So I found out x was 150. I want, like I always ask you, 150 what? What were we solving for? We know that it was favors over dollars, so that means we were solving for dollars. So put that into context. That's $150. So you know it's going to cost you $150 for 60 favors. So you answered your question using the proportion method. That method is always welcome to be used for direct variation situations such as this. Now, if you think you can do it with the direct variation method, hit pause and try it for a moment on your own. Okay, so the direct variation method, as we did earlier, you first have to find k. We gotta find out what k is. We do that by plugging in for x and y and solving for k. Once you do that, you're gonna know what k is and that'll be your equation. Let's say k equals two like it was in our previous examples, y equals 2x, that would be your equation you would use. Now, I just made up that number, that's not gonna fit this question, but that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna start by solving for x. Oh, I said x, I meant k. We're gonna solve for k, that's our first step. So now, plug in what we know. We were told 25 favors is 6250. You choose how many favors you want. You chose how many people, people to invite, or you chose how many to make. You did not choose how much it was gonna cost you to buy them at the store. So you chose this, so because you chose that, that's gonna be your input or your x. That is your independent variable, the one that has freedom to choose. The one that is the effect, this is the cause, this is the effect. The one that is the result of the other one. That is the dependent variable or your output or your y, otherwise known as. Remember, we said those four words all mean the same thing. Output, y, range, dependent variable, all those mean the same thing. All right, so plug in for x, plug in for y, solve for k. That's all we're going to do. So we know that y equals 6250. And we, we do not know k. That's what we're trying to solve for. But we know that x is 25, and that's it in, in this example. So our job is to solve for k. So just like any equation, we got to get rid of times 25 by dividing by 25. So divide both sides by 25. And I'm going to take a moment to cheat and grab the calculator. Save myself time and you. All right, so it's not, it's not cheating because I use a calculator because remember we can use calculators in chapter five. At this point, we're not worried about arithmetic. We're worried about our problem solving ability. So let's see, we solved for K. We found K equals 2.5. So that tells us our equation to match this situation is Y equals 2.5 X. Okay, because remember it's Y equals KX. So K turned out to be 2.5. So Y equals 2.5 X which means the, co the constant of variation or the constant rate of change, or the, in this case, the price per favor is gonna be $2.50. So we found out that it's gonna be $2.50. That's going to tell us times how many favors we need. That will tell us how much money it's gonna cost us. So now to answer this question, how much will it cost for 60 favors? You know that favors is X. So we're just gonna plug 60 in to the place of X is what we're gonna do in this situation. So y equals 2.5 times 
times 60. So then you could use your calculator or whatever you want to do it, or some people do this mentally. Two times, stop writing, erase, bad, there we go. Two times 60 is 120. Half times 60 is 30. 120 plus 30 is 150. So that's, for those of you who want to try to do that mentally, y equals 150. And so y represented the dollars, so that this money we just found out, or that amount we found out is dollars. So that tells us 100, and fifty dollars and hey that agrees with what we did over here with the proportion method so in closing I just want to remind you guys that for all direct variation questions if you're going to use the, the equation the first thing you have to do is solve for K once you know K you know your equation and then the equation is just usually a one-step multiplying equation you can do an input output table or just do an input for what they're asking you so it's going to be just like constant rate of change. It's going to be just like finding slope. It's going to be just like all linear equations, except for these linear equations will go through the origin. So when you were to graph a direct variation equation, it's going to go through the origin like that. Or it could be going in the other direction and go through the origin. Pretend that one went through the origin. I know I missed. It could look like that. Now, one last thing I want to point out. Some of you may remember what we did in the beginning of Chapter 4 or you may remember a more intuitive way that works for you. I'm just going to quickly mention there is technically a third method that, uh, that, you, that someone might try to answer this question, and that method would be the unit rate method. The unit rate method. That might be how some people like to think of it, to where they want to find out how much is it for one favor, because if they can figure out how much one favor is, they're just going to multiply it by 60. So, for example, if you had 6250 and you have 25 favors, the unit rate method would be a lot of people have done 6250 divided by 25 favors. Stop erasing. Stop erasing. Divided by 25 favors. 6250 divided by 25. Hey, that's actually something we did over here, so we already know that it's going to equal 2.5. So that's going to tell us $2.5 um, dollars. So that's going to be $2.50 per favor. So that's the unit rate method. Once you know how much it is for one favor, you can multiply it now by however many favors you need. You need 60 favors, no problem. So you'll do 2.5 times 60, and then you're gonna get what we did down here. We're gonna get 150. So the unit rate method feels different, but if you compare it to what we did with the direct variation method, it was the almost the exact same calculations. We just gave it a framework over here, but intuitively, it may work for you. The unit rate method is valid and always works for all direct variation questions we were asking to solve for something. So as of now, I've shown you three different methods that you can solve direct variation questions with. Rely on either one that works for you. I do not have a preference as your math teacher because I can tell you all of these methods always work no matter what type of question you're dealing with with direct variation. The one that works for any kind of constant change is going to be your, uh, your constant change. is going to be your proportion method perhaps. Or more, what would always work would also be your equation method because then you could re rely on our skills we've been learning with input output tables. All right, guys, so carefully work your way through these and take your time on your homework and make sure your answers are reasonable.